Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I'm Super Saiyan. And in this video, we're gonna make a P90 style pickup from a scrap 2x4. I'm gonna show and explain the entire process. Then we're gonna stick it in the mule guitar and try it out with solid state amp modeling and a boutique tube amplifier with a vintage speaker. And since this is the first video in the Rule Breaker slash Mythbuster guitar build series, we will see what rules we can break and miss we can dispel. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Let's make some sawdust. So the first thing I did was to use a piece of masonite to set up the fence on the table saw to the desired thickness for the flat work. Then I proceeded to rip some veneer from this piece of 2x4 left over from repairing my garage. And what you end up with is this nice book matched pine flat work as you see here. Next I consulted a drawing that I had made previously for measurements and using a speed square I marked the dimensions of the front and rear faces of the pickup. Then I use a level as a straight edge to mark the center line. Then I mark the two edges of the middle pole pieces. Note the way that I put the pencil down and then move the square to the pencil for accuracy. I use a Stratocaster pickup cover to mark the location of my pole pieces. Then I measured and marked the location of the mounting screws. And what you'll end up with is something like this. I used a nut driver bit to mark the radius for the corners. All this was done on the back of the flat work. As you can see, the pretty side is on the other side here. Then a bandsaw was used to liberate this flat work from its piney prison. And to roughly knock off those corners. Now this is a common luthier's trick. I'm placing tape on the back of the flat work and then super gluing the tape together so that it can be separated later. Then we just clip off that extra tape. I used a sanding table to square off the edges and then use the belt to get those corners. Then it was time to drill the holes for the pole pieces. Then two smaller holes for the mounting screws. Now we gotta try to pry these things apart without breaking them. Then rub a little 60 grit on them holes we made. And now we have a good piece of pine flat work. Now we'll use Maxwell's rusty hammer to knock in these pole pieces. And these are just the cheapest uh, humbucker pole pieces from Amazon.com. I used that pickup cover to help me get the back plate on evenly. And I learned from another YouTube channel of a guy that lives right across the river from me called Chase's Workshop that the holes in the back piece need to be a little bigger so that it doesn't bust. So I use a little super glue for extra security. And now we have a finished bobbin. Well, almost. I forgot to drill the holes for the lead wires. So then I hit that with a little bit of sandpaper so it won't grab the magnet wire. Now I'm brushing the dust off of the pickup bobbin and opening up this can of Minwax Fast Dry Polyurethane. Then I just dunk the pickup in there to seal the wood, glue it together, and create an insulating layer for the pole pieces. But I reckon that didn't satisfy me, so I dipped it again. Then I hung it up to drip dry for 12 hours. Now I take some 42 gauge magnet wire and wrap it around the lead. Then it gets soldered on thusly. And I know people are gonna say, you don't use a soldering gun on pickups. They'll demagnetize them. Well, this does not have Alnico pole pieces and the magnets are across the room in a box. So I'll put a little bit of shrink wrap on there and wrap the lead three quarters of a turn around the pole pieces and then stuff it inside like a Gibson PAF. And now using a sewing machine I inherited from my grandmother as a pickup winder, I start winding and winding and winding and winding. Then I stopped to check the coil and then more winding. Exactly how many turns of winding? I don't know. I did not count them. I wound it until my heart said it was done, which is about 7.5k. And when that's done and the negative lead is attached, I started to wrap the coil with embroidery thread. Then I tied it off real good, put a dot of super glue on there, cut the excess string, then another dot of super glue. Now we got this. Quite snazzy and antique looking, I think. Now to glue the magnets. And yes, this is a 16 pound pull neodymium bar magnet. If this just made you decide to click off this video, I've done the experiments and I designed this pickup accordingly. This is part of that myth busting thing. You should not believe 
leave everything you hear on forums. And now a second magnet for 32 pounds of pull. That's gotta kill the sustain, right? Not as much as an Alnico pole piece. So the pickup's hooked up to the amp and I tap it and move the magnet until it makes the highest output. And we have a working pickup, although very microphonic. So this is a bag of soy wax pellets that I got at a resale store for a few dollars. Now I know it's not your proprietary blend of beeswax and paraffin tone wax, but if you believe in that kind of thing, I think you're going to be real surprised by the sound of this pickup. Big crock pot was taking too long, so this happened. Before potting, got the string on it and everything. Here, we, here goes nothing. There it is, making them bubbles. And you see the magnets and stuff turn hard. Whenever that stuff gets all clear, and the bubbles stop, then I know it's time to take it out and wipe it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the little screen. Boop, 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 boop. It has been nine minutes, and the bubbles have stopped. That string's good and saturated. This thing is still shiny. I smell that poly. That poly smells strong. And now I need to just kind of wipe off the excess. Lay it on its back for about, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour. Seven point eight three, seven point eight four. It's cooling off, so it's going down. It's time to stick it in the pickup testing mule guitar and see what it does. But since it's ultimately going in a guitar with a Bigsby, the question is, will it Dwayne Eddy? <laughs> Can a neodymium pickup have smooth, sparkly cleans? Can a P90 metal? How does this home-built pickup react with a transparent tube amplifier? Cover it up. Part of the speaker with a pillow.
Well guys, that just about does it for this video. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, bitch slap that like button. Now I want to talk about why I'm making this video and the other videos in the Mythbuster guitar series. I'm absolutely not just trying to be a smart ass. My goal is to dispel some myths that I see commonly repeated on guitar forums and Facebook groups. And hopefully it inspires some other people to try these things. And to show that this stuff's not rocket surgery and it doesn't take a ton of money to make a nice instrument. I calculated this pickup build at a little under $5. And you don't necessarily need any of these power tools. This pickup could be made with wall paneling or veneer from Hobby Lobby using common hand tools. And if you're interested in seeing some other videos in this series like building a guitar neck from an oak table or how to make a five dollar roller bridge not suck building these split single coils mash that subscribe widget till next time